can. I'd like to call the Commerce Gaming and Land hearing back to order. The time is 2.16. Sorry, we're a minute late. Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> I have a few more questions, and hopefully I'll be finished, Mr. Hager. Right before we broke, you mentioned if you could go back. We were talking about the words urgency that you used, the words working together. And you mentioned if you could go back to the day that we were declassifying the documents, you mentioned that you would do it differently, that you would have showed up in person instead of sending a letter to us. <clears throat> and you also mentioned during your testimony that hindsight's always 2020, looking at, back at hindsight. That's how we learn. You know, I know we're all going to learn something here. So tell me, what, what changed your mind um, about the actions to send a letter instead of showing up in person? I, I'm trying to find a way to answer um, in a way that doesn't breach my obligation to not say anything. Just give me a, give me one second. Certainly. I, I want to answer. I want to answer that question. Okay, I'm gonna take my best shot here, okay? Um, I'm a collaborator by nature, and you know I've got a mantra for life, which is all of life is based on relationship. And to me, relationship happens <coughs> person to person. Um, it's, just the, it's just the way that I you know, desire to do things. The situation that we were all in was heavy. And, and when it's heavy, you can maybe imagine, you know, what those discussions are like when you're considering how you're going to go about doing something. And, you know, that involves dialogue, it involves um, all the people that would be present in an executive session. So think about the people who would be present in an executive session that's a legal advice executive session. So there's, those people are going to be present for that. The discuss, discussions are going to be had and the conversation is going to be heavy. And you're just trying to make what you think is the best decision at that point in time. And it ended the way that it did with us sending the letter. None of that takes away from the fact that my innate nature has never changed and has always wanted to do things in a person-to-person -person basis. And so I know that it was a, not able to answer directly, but I'm just trying to say 100% could go back to that and make that decision different. You know, we make decisions as a board all together, and that was the decision. And... Um, could go if I could go back I would have been here in person thank you mr. Hager for answering that <clears throat> my next question is can we turn to page 770 please
Okay, Mr. Hager. So we have mentioned and had conversations, you and I, with this committee also you have about the policy violations concerning credit card, country club, um, and those policy violations are because, in your opinion, and please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, in your opinion that it's hard or nearly impossible, I think is the actual words that you used, to decipher if something is or isn't a business expense. And um, clearly, the prior CEO reimbursed the casino to the tune of you know, over $5,000, so he knew that he himself had violated his um, credit card policy on personal expenses. So in looking at the receipt on the bottom left, dated 3-22-2019, <clears throat> With that, sir, and knowing that the policy states that the individual's names must be listed and the purpose of the of the um, receipt or whom was there is, would need to also be listed, knowing that I've worked in... Uh, closely with human resources and other jobs that I've had, created policy and such myself, regardless if you can tell if it's a business expense or not, it's a policy violation. Therefore, it's considered personal until otherwise proved that it's business and therefore would need to be reimbursed. Can you tell me that with that information that I just, you know, talked about, that this receipt... Can you tell me that you believe that that is a business expense? And let me read off what's on. Go ahead and read off on what's on what that receipt, if you don't mind. Gotcha. Okay, well, I'll do it for the record. Oh, you want me to say it? Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, you're, you're referring to the one that's got two kid chicken fingers on yes. the tab. Yeah. Uh, tea, club, cob salad. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah. Can you tell me that? you feel that this is, could be explained as a business expense? Yeah. No, I, I understand the nature of the question. Um, you, you, you framed the, the judgment of personal expense versus business expense in a new light for me. I don't know that I've previously viewed it through the lens of it's personal until proven uh, business. Um, I, I look at this and the breach that I see that's obvious is the lack of names and, and business purpose. That's the clear breach, um, which makes the reimbursement difficult, right? Well, which one? Maybe this one was in the, maybe this one was in the reimbursement. Again, what I can go from experience, and I think, you know, again, this is not intended to be uh, any sort of defense. You're asking if there's a, you know, scenario where it could be a business expense. I don't know how often kid chicken fingers occurs in this 1500 pages. I would presume it's isolated to this incident. Maybe there's a few others. My, I'm assuming that it's going to be more rare as opposed to more common. Maybe I can, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, yeah, I mean, I can think of some rare scenarios. Um, you know, at a conference, and um, people who are traveling in for the conference, uh, they're there present for that, but they took the opportunity to have a family getaway at the same time. And so during the conference, uh, you're having lunch together, and family is present for that. Um, all I'm saying is, is that I go back to my original thought process as I'm evaluating it. I completely understand the optics, and without any other information present, 100%, that should go into the reimbursement column. No, no disagreement on that. 
Are you seeing, is there any scenario where that could be a business expense? I would have to get creative, you know, but, you know, but my point is it would be extremely rare. You should not have kid chicken fingers showing up on any sort of uh, regular basis. And you shouldn't have any receipts showing up without people who were present and business purpose. That is a clear violation. Thank you, Mr. Hager. And I, I, just for your information, there's 38 receipts that have children's meals. Okay. And then there's also receipts with children's clothing and golf clubs and lessons being purchased. Very good. Do, do we also know the, just curious, do we know the dollar amount magnitude of those 38 instances? I'm sure we can get that for you. I would just, I mean, for me, my own curiosity, I would just be curious how that would relate to the amount of the reimbursement check. Just again, that would be just for information. I think we would too. Okay. So earlier, the the uh, contract buyout was mentioned, and you used a couple of words, non-factual, possibly or untrue. You can't talk about a lot of it. Um, there was stuff published in the paper. You know, we can all sit here and assume. It was more than that. It was more than what was reported in the paper. And it's definitely something that <clears throat> most of us are interested in. I can say that with confidence. Um, I know that you're not going to speak on it. I'm not asking you to speak on it, okay? I'm not. It does look like we paid somebody to leave our service. And it does look like we may need some reform whether it come from this office or not, would you work together with us on that, sir? Yes, ma'am. Would you also be willing to set a time in the future <coughs> to meet with Congress, and if it need be an executive session, to discuss the buyout contract? And if it needs to be following the, invest the, the completion of the current Gaming Commission's investigation, that's understandable, but you mentioned that you there's urgency, that you're wanting to work together, that if you could go back, you would have been here that day to testify when we were declassifying the documents. Are you still willing to work together in, in, the, in, the, in the hopes of building trust again with us because we do not trust you? Building trust with us and in the spirit of transparency Just one second. Congresswoman Lemon, as I've said before, the, the first part is a wholehearted yes on working together, and I'm trying to find a way to say yes to the other part of your question. So just give, if I can just give me one more second. Certainly. Okay. Two things. Um, first, um, 
obviously I can't speak unilaterally on something that would be um, a decision that would need to involve the input of the whole board. So that's the first preface. But there, there is an aspect or component of the question that you've asked that I can't discuss because of the sensitive nature of it. However, in an effort to answer the question the way that I really want to, I'm going to say it this way. If we could ensure that appropriate safeguards were in place to make sure that we're not in violation of any aspect of agreement or something, uh, anything related legal in nature, then yes. Uh, I would be open to having that dialogue. Sorry it took so long. That's okay, Mr. Hager. I'm <laughs> glad you answered with a yes or a no. Uh, I appreciate that. Therefore, with your yes, would we need to send a formal request from our chair or our speaker? Or will this suffice this inform this question these this conversation, this personal conversation some that we're having here face to face? My preference, Congresswoman Lemon, in this particular question, this particular dialogue, my preference would to have be to have, again because of something I can't talk about in this moment. My preference would be to have an initial conversation between your all's legal and our legal, and start with a dialogue there to work through a component, and then let that lead to uh, whatever it would look like in terms of a in terms of a formal meeting request. Thank you. So um, really just two things left. The kids of specific, ch the, the children's, the kids specific charges was $3,136.47 in the 1500 pages that are right there, sir. That was very and fast. Our staff and we have been working very deliberately. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, Mr. Hager, you probably knew this was going to be coming. <laughs> Let's look at a receipt. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> what page number are we on, my dear? 661, please. Are you familiar with this organization, sir? Yes, ma'am. Can you enlighten yes, us on what the name of this organization is? YPO. What does it stand for? Young President's Organization. And what do they do for people? It is a network of the primary decision maker, senior leader of an organization that meets certain requirements for entrance and um, provides a backdrop of experience and exchange um, to, you know, to edify the life of a leader in a variety of different ways. Give us an example. When you're the CEO of a large corporation and you face challenges, think about who the person is that you talk to the most. Um, you talk to your spouse, and your spouse can relate to some aspects of what you're going through, but they, they can't relate to all aspects of what you're going through because they don't sit in your seat. You can talk to a work colleague, but in the same way, they can understand some aspects, but they don't know what it's like to sit in your seat. This is an organization where you fellowship and have very close fellowship with people who sit in your seat for other organizations. And the quality of feedback and experience that you get hearing others' challenges 
and helping them work through those and they help you work through the challenges you're experiencing. It's a very unique experience. I appreciate that explanation some. I feel like it was really generalized. So let's just ask it this way. Are you a member of Young Presidents? Organization. Organization. Yes, ma'am. Did you buy in with a membership to this organization? Yes. What is, what is, are there levels of buy-in? No, you're either a member or you're not. What is the fee? Well, you're, you already pulled up the receipt right there. That's it. The monthly fee to be a member? That's annual. <coughs> Yearly? Yearly. Can you explain tier one? Are there more than one tier? One, two, three? Oh, well, what I, I'm going to do something I probably shouldn't do, which is I'm going to, I'm going to make a presumption. Um, primarily there's, there's just the one tier. I would guess that 99% of the people are, are that the only caveat I can think of is uh, sometimes people, they're a part of a chapter in a local area, say Tulsa, okay? But maybe they do a lot of business in Oklahoma City. They can apply for a secondary membership to another chapter that would allow them entrance into some of the events and activities and things like that. And since it's a secondary membership and not their primary, it would be, I, I believe, it, a, it would not cost quite as much to do your secondary membership. I believe that to be... Uh, the nature of that tier one, but I can I can tell you at or near a hundred percent that of the membership are paying that as the annual the annual membership cost. The annual membership cost then is the thirty seven fifty, which is three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, or it's the seven hundred seven hundred and twenty five dollars. The seventy seven twenty five because you are paying. Uh, dues to two places as a part of your membership and you can't pick and choose. One of them is to the larger parent organization and the other one is dues to your local chapter. So every, every person that is in that chapter is paying that fee. <clears throat> Thank you for that answer, sir. So, is it safe to say that the individuals that buy membership to this organization are fairly well off, off or wealthy? It would be in some ways speculation to um, try to say like what the to use a measurement, what the net worth uh, of an individual would be. But, um, but again, I'm gonna go ahead and answer your question. In, in general, the answer is gonna be yes, it, I'll say it this way. Uh, people that are part of this organization are some of the most highly influential people in a given region. What their personal finance status is difficult to say, but there are barriers to entrance based on company revenue levels, employment levels, things along those lines. So in a way, I would, I, I'm gonna answer the question you didn't ask, but it's, it's getting to the same point to, to help is, you know, you couldn't have a company with five people and have 100,000 in revenue and get in. No, you're, in order to be qualified as a member, you're gonna be at, levels substantially larger than that. Okay, thank you for for telling me that because so if um, you have to meet certain revenue guidelines and um, not necessarily based on net worth um, in order to be able to eat them and apply for this membership and then it has to be approved, I'm assuming by the board. Um, 
I mean, the approval is more of the, you know, more of a local chapter. Like, for instance, you know, there are some chapters that have many chapters that have a wait list, you know, so you can meet the requirements, but you're not in because they're capped out on their level of membership. You have to wait for people to get off. So, so there's, there's reasons that you might or might not be able to enter, but before you can even, to your point, before you can even apply, you have to meet certain requirements. And it has nothing to do upon, that's why I was trying to rephrase to help. It has nothing to do on a person's individual financial status. It's more about where they sit in their organization and meeting organizational requirements that they, requirements of the organizations they lead. Okay, thank you. So you mentioned that these are very influential people in the Tulsa and Oklahoma City area? World. In the world. And how many members does YPO have in the world? Oof. Um, first, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I, to give an order of magnitude, you know, I, it's in the, you know, it's in the tens of thousands, you know, if I was guessing, I would say maybe 70,000. Okay, thank you. So how have, so you're a member? Yes, ma'am. And do you, are you a member of the Tulsa and the Oklahoma City chapter? No, just Tulsa. Just Tulsa. And, um... Are there fellow Osages that are members of the of that organization that you know of? Uh, no, the only other one was uh, the only other one was was Byron, and and I was a member of this long before I was um, appointed to the to the gaming board. Do you sit on their board? I do. What position do you hold? This year, I'm chair of the board. There's an officer rotation, and um, and so this year happens to be my chair year. Okay, and how has that benefited you as an Osage business owner? How has the organization benefited? And being a member of that organization benefited you as an Osage um, business owner? I don't understand the Osage aspect of it. Um, you're talking about my personal business, or are we talking about the well, enterprise? Well, this is your personal membership, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and you're in a membership with very influential people. Correct. You have a personal business. Yes. Which, you know, and um, how has that benefited you oh. being, in that, yeah. uh, being in that organization? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, so our, our, you know, our business, um, you know, we, we are a, a, business to business, you know, we're, we're not a consumer based business. We're, we're, Big Elk is not a company that sells things that the average consumer would buy. We sell to industry. Um, I can think of, I mean, in this moment, I can think of countless examples where being able to leverage the network of relationships that I have through organization got me to the person that I needed to talk to at my potential client. Um, we have secured significant business simply by utilizing relationships. I, I don't even know that I could give you a, um, to use a, use a finance term, I don't know that I could give you a return on investment number because it would be so substantial because of the involvement with this organization. Okay, thank you, sir. So if you, if we, so our cas um, casino board approved a resolution to uh, sponsor or donate to this organization, correct? So, say it one more time. Our casino board approved a donation or sponsorship in the tune of $130,000, I believe, yep. um, to this organization, and it was approved. Yeah. So is, um, is there a tier tiered sponsorship oh. well so unfortunately we've not we've not closed the deal so to speak on that because as you know uh or may recall at the end of all the motions that we make in our session we have this phrase that says uh motion passes pending legal review i've never actually had a scenario where uh, i thought that was just something you say on the script i've never actually had a, a scenario where that ended up causing something that had been passed by the board to not take place until this. Um, when we were 
uh, looking at the opportunity because we had done some smaller events with this organization, which were uh, very successful in terms of the gains to the casinos. Um, so now we were looking at increasing our involvement through this sponsorship. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I made a mistake. Uh, while we were in that meeting, uh, I had not invited someone from the organization to speak on the organization's behalf, and we were going to have on the agenda looking at the YPO sponsorship. Um, one of the board members naturally had a question or two about nature, so we began to talk about it. But in the process of talking about it, um, I was the only person to be able to answer questions about it, and that, which I agree with, um, was considered advocacy for uh, that sponsorship. Now, prior to that meeting, just so you know, I had sent an email um, to legal counsel to say, hey, this is gonna be on the agenda. Uh, I'm on the board of this organization, and you know, what's, <laughs> what am I to proceed? And the response was, abstain from the uh, recuse, uh, recuse your, disclose, disclose your relationship with the organization and recuse yourself from the vote, okay? I did both of those things. But unfortunately, in our law, it is also not just disclose and recuse yourself, but also don't advocate uh, for it. Now, I will admit what it started as me simply answering some questions of board members that had questions, but where my mistake was, was not inviting someone else from the organization to talk about it, which I do apologize for. We did not do the sponsorship as a result of that not passing um, a legal review. Um, so that's just to get you know caught up on the present day. Now, I would tell you uh, personally, and I would love to share without mentioning names, which I would be glad to do if you would like, I, I could share some extremely tangible numbers because as of this point, like uh, the YPO organization actually moved forward under the pretense that that sponsorship was happening because of the fact that we approved the vote and that it was la later denied by legal we already started receiving the benefit of that sponsorship. I can tell you on, I mean, I'll just give you one right out of the gate. Uh, there is one of the organization, one of the leaders of organization, YPO, uh, immediately booked their holiday party at Osage Casinos Tulsa. Would not have happened otherwise. Has 700 employees. It led to incredible number of hotel night stays and gaming that was off the charts. Those are the types of things that can happen by having these types of people in affiliation with that. So I'm a strong supporter, obviously, and that came out whenever I was in that uh, board meeting, which I do apologize for because, you know, I'm still learning also. Um, I, I try to get as much as I can in terms of the, the rules and regulations around things. And, it and, I, and I wanted you to know, I even sent an email to legal to ask ahead of time. And I, in my opinion, I followed what came back to me, but I later learned that I missed a point, um, which was the advocacy aspect of it. It won't happen again. But uh, anyway, that's that's the nature of it. Thank you. So the legal that you sent the, uh, the request to was? Well, I didn't actually do it. Um, and I'm trying to think of the, I'm, try, I'm not personally the one that sent. So when we, it's a good question. When we get finished with the meeting, I need to ask. I don't know if it's Brooklyn that um, has the action item of, sending you know a copy of the resolutions uh for legal approval um but at the time it would have i suppose it would have been um terry mason moore and dean luffy and at that time was the board um had the board hired terry mason moore or dean luffy and that's a good question also see here's the we get into this quandary where um i guess in some aspects we have to have these motions that say pending legal review, and it has to have legal review. And I honestly can't recall if that was before or after the time that we had formally uh, engaged T Terry and Dean directly from the board. And if we did something wrong in that, I guess my question would be, I don't know how we were supposed to operate with, without being able to have direct counsel and still have this pending legal review that's a part of our requirements. So I just don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with that particular scenario. Is it your plan, thank you, is it your plan to continue to hopefully 
invite YPO to um, a board meeting and have them give a presentation? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hager, do you see a conflict of interest with you being the chairman of the board of YPO, the Tulsa chapter, wanting a $130,000 sponsorship or donation, and the fact that you could benefit from that also in networking and um, that, that that could be construed as you utilizing your chair as board in an influential way on donations and then influential in the fact that you would gain from that somehow personally? 100% Congresswoman Lemon, I do not see it that way at all. I was already a member of this organization. I already received benefit from this. The only reason I'm even doing this is so that the casino can receive the benefit. These sponsorships are exclusive. And I really do not even want to say this in a, in a public environment, but given the fact that we're here and talking about it, I mean, I can tell you, so for instance, without me having to say something too specific, uh, let me describe it this way. If we had a, 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 a um, you know, a premier strategic partner, what I'm talking about for the casino, and they were in the, uh, and they were in the um, and they were in the accounting business. Okay, YPO would not sign up another accounting business as a sponsor. You see what I'm saying? Like so, they're they're exclusive in nature. Um, the financial benefit to the casino, in my opinion, is a no-brainer. In fact, we have already received revenues that would more than justify the money that we never even spent. If we don't do that, 100% someone else will. And I would hate to see that financial benefit go to some other enterprise instead of our enterprise. So my view of it is not the idea that I'm somehow self-serving uh, and receiving benefit. I was already a part of this. I'm, I'm viewing this as a because of my relationship with the organization, trying to bring that benefit through my own personal network so that Osages can receive the benefit and not some other enterprise. I understand that we may differ in opinion, but that's my genuine heartfelt ambition in trying to get this done. I understand this is my last, um, we've had this conversation, we've even had it face to face, yeah. so you know that our opinions do differ. It would be because there are other organizations besides YPO within the Tulsa area that have major contact and influencers that the chairman of the board is not the chairman of their board. And you would still be bringing in those other individuals that have no connection to our board. Therefore, there is no muddy water. And I, I spoke to you about that before. I still hold true to that belief today, and I'm disappointed that, that unfortunately, that, that you do not feel there is a conflict of interest when there are other organizations that you could do the same thing with that you have no ties to, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman Lemon. I have some, just a couple of questions, and, um, and then we'll move on to the next witness. When you mentioned the YPO organization and the value that they could bring to our casino, um, have those conversations also been held with the director of player development, with Mr. Patrick O'Brien, who's in charge of actually this type of um, activity? Um, Patrick O'Brien? Or not Patrick, um, what's his name, Mike McGuire? Yes, Mike McGuire, he's the head of, I apologize. He's the head of uh, player development within the casino, and that that's his job. Okay. I, so, apologies, Congresswoman Rivard. I I don't honestly know uh, if he's involved or not. You know, for me, my involvement's with the CEO, my involvement's with the senior team. So when we're setting up a high-profile engagement that is going to have, you know, a multitude of high-caliber individuals, you know, my focus is you know, making sure, especially because of the relationships that exist, that those people are present. 
um, I would have to be making assumptions on whether or not, you know, the CEO or C <laughs> COO, you know, then engaged other people in the organization to also be involved. But I can tell you that on the occasions that we have had um, events and, and hosted YPO and, and like I said, received um, tremendous benefit, uh, there were lots of Osage Casinos staff engaged in that process. Many of them I don't know personally, but it was, I mean, there was a lot. We had a great, we had a great, great showing and it was a great, great event. Okay. So you mentioned the word hosting. So the casino was hosting YPO and, and by doing so, did they receive like privileges such as concert tickets, suite privileges? or comps complimentary incentive by any by any means not necessarily I, so in in both events i can think of that took place on sites so when i use the word host what i mean is people physically came to one of our sites um and on on both i mean i have to get exact numbers and we would have to have a, a forum where we could maybe talk some of the specifics but in general i can tell you that on both occasions YPO was transacting money with us in order to have that event there. Okay, and what did we do as the, uh, as far as the casino on our end? Did we provide them with any any comps like a uh, suite seats at the Skyline concert tickets? Yeah. Uh, did we comp a ballroom, anything of that nature? Yeah. So one event um, one event was held outside in the, you know, the kind of the pool cabana area. And we had like, you know, food and drink set up and, you know, YPO paid a pretty significant amount of money to have us, you know, cater and, and host and have that event. Um, that was mainly just kind of a fun fellowship networking type thing. The second event uh, did involve kind of the combination of uh, a concert and gaming afterwards. And um, I honestly believe that YPO paid for the tickets for the concert, uh, which did take place in a suite, um, and then gaming afterwards. Okay, so what about the event around the, the pool area? YPO paid for that as well? Yes. And all the food and beverage? Yes. Okay, with no comps? None that I'm, none that I'm aware of. I mean, I, again, I'd need to go look specific details, but I don't believe so. Okay. Um, there was also an event held at Wake and Iron with David Grand. Was that, was that a YPO event? It was, I personally spearheaded that event. It was amazing. Okay, good. And it was the casino, was, did they fund in any way? No, uh, the casino funded it in zero. Uh, but I would say, again, um, there, were, there were 80 to 100 people present for this event. They are, some of the most senior influential people in our region of the state. And it was a powerful thing to have these people connecting with Osage, Osage culture, and Osage history. It was actually the highest rated YPO event of the year was that fireside chat with David Grant. I was very proud of that. Um, it, was, it was a wonderful thing. And the more that we are able to connect in those types of ways, it provides opportunities for them because these are individuals that when they come to game, they don't come by themselves. Mm -hmm. They come with their whole company for a corporate retreat. They come with their whole company for a holiday party. You're, you're, able, to, you're able to provide revenue opportunities at much higher magnitude. So I'm very, I'm very proud of that. It's, okay. it's significant. Who provided the food for that event at Wake and Iron? Uh, YPO paid for uh, uh, Osage cooks to uh, to make the we had a traditional Osage uh, meal okay yeah and then um, my last question to you unless the committee has any other questions um, are, are you currently still a council member on Governor Stitt's workforce and economic development yes I'm a council for yes it's Department of Commerce uh, workforce and economic development. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the committee? Oh, I guess that's an appointed position, correct? 
It is, and I guess my comment there, Congresswoman Rivard, uh, again, this is something that would. Yes or no? Well. Yes or no, is it an appointed position? I said yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, committee, if we're done, I will remind you, and thank you for your testimony, Mr. Hager. Um, you have to stay in the building in case we have other questions. Sometimes we'll pull you back up and ask other questions if it comes to light. Thank you, sir. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, it's 301. What do you guys wanna do? Do you guys wanna take another short break before our last motion to recess for 10 minutes? Second. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. All those